Hello, my dear friends. Good morning and welcome to this new class. And as you remember, we completed our previous lesson, lesson number three, in which we are talking about the water, the water resources, and we saw how important is water source in order to live a quality life. And we completed all the lessons, explanation, and so on. And what is left was the few. We can say a few exercises that you have left out. We shall do that one today. Let's take that exercise, page number thirty-three. So first one is multiple choice questions. First one says, based on the information given below, classify each of the situations as suffering from water scarcity or not suffering from water scarcity. So different situations are provided here. We have to find out whether people are in that situation suffering from water scarcity or not, or they are not suffering. So first one is. A region with high annual rainfall. So people were living in a region where there is high annual rainfall. What do you think? Will the people be suffering there? Because will they be suffering from water scarcity? They are having high rate of annual rainfall. Certainly, they will have sufficient water. They will not be suffering from water scarcity. So answer is no suffering from water scarcity. Then the second one is a region having high annual rainfall and large population. Suppose the region is having very high rainfall, but population is also very large. Then in that situation, what do you think? Will the people be suffering from water scarcity? Yes, there is a possibility because water source is there, but the people are also Huge in number, so it is not enough for everybody to share. So people will experience water scarcity. So second one is yes, they will share, they will suffer water scarcity. Then the third possibility, third example is a region having high annual rainfall, but water is highly polluted. So a place where they receive Very high rate, high annual rainfall, but all this water is polluted. Maybe because of some industries are there, all the waste is put into there, or maybe a lot of things are mixed into there. So, what do you think? Will those people suffer from water scarcity? They have plenty of water, but water is not pure. It is polluted water. So they will certainly. Suffer from suffer from water scarcity. So answer is yes. Then number four. Let's see what is the fourth one. A region having low rainfall and low population. So a place we said a place where they receive high annual rainfall and huge population, they will suffer water scarcity because water is not enough. So at least they receive very low rainfall, and the population also is very low. So in that case, what do you think? Can they have enough water? Since the population is very low, they can preserve these water sources and survive in that. So we can say that place may not have water scarcity because very less people are there. So they have, they may have very few water sources. And they will be able to uh, make use of that and survive without any water scarcity. Then, second question is, which one of the following situation statements is not an argument in favor of multi-purpose river project? So, we have some cases are there, and under that case, we have to say which one is. Not suitable for making multi-river projects. For example, first one is multi-purpose projects bring 
water to those areas which suffer from water scarcity so that's a good thing is it not for that we don't have to uh, cancel the dam so it will bring water to the people who are suffering from water scarcity then second option is multi purpose projects by regulating water flow helps to control floods so that is also a good thing the multi purpose projects the dams they are able to uh, control to a certain extent the floods in the rainy season then number c multi purpose projects generate electricity for uh, multi lead to a large scale displacement and loss of livelihood so that is a negative point because of the dam uh, people uh, are displaced people are uh, chased out from their places or they lose their uh, land house property everything because water level will be coming up in the river and they cannot stay anywhere there so they have to get their place and go to some safe areas so people are displaced and their livelihood is lost they were depending on that area they were cultivating in that area they were collecting uh, fruits and nuts from the forest they have lost all that thing so that is a very bad thing and because of that people are trying to object the uh, building of huge dams so that is the answer third one because it is uh, leading to large displacement of people and their livelihood is affected let us just see also fourth one multi purpose projects generate electricity and rewrite and our homes so that is a good thing because of the dams we can have electricity for industries as well as for our homes so out of these four three of them are good points positive points which we can use for supporting the building of the dam but the third point that is a, a negative aspect of this dam what is that it is making the people to cause displacement people are asked to leave their place and go to some other place that is a very sad thing so they are people have to make a lot of sacrifice they have to abandon their land their property and their livelihood everything is lost that is a very sad thing now let's see number 3 here are some of the false statements identify the mistakes and rewrite them correctly so the false statements are given there and all of them are false or some of them are false so we have to find out what is a mistake and we have to rewrite into correct sentence correct statement the first one says multiply urban centers with large and dense population and urban lifestyles have helped in proper utilization of water resources so what do you think is it correct so the place where there is a huge population that is in the urban area urban area always they have very huge population and we know they require lot of water is it not so the statement says because of this urban settlement because of this huge population in the urban area it has helped to proper utilization of water resources actually that is not what we studied is it not what we said was because of this huge population in the urban areas what happens the water sources are exploited not we are using properly but we are exploiting it because day by day people need more and more water and from where do they get the water they get water from under the well under the earth from the well or well from the pond and so on so we are exploiting the water resources so that is what we are saying not that they are helping to the proper utilization of the water resources but because of them the water resources are exploited over exploited we take out too much water in order to supply to the urban centers 
Then second one is regulating and damming of rivers. So we control the river and make dam in the river. Does not affect the river's natural flow and its sediments flow. So we know rivers are always carrying lot of sediments, lot of uh, silts, sand, soil, everything is carried by the river. So the statement says when we make a dam in the river, it is not affecting the flow of water or the flow of the sediments. Is it true? Naturally they are affected. Is it not? When we make a dam in the and blocking the flow of the river, all the sediments, everything will come and remain there. We cannot go to the other side because it is blocked there. So it is naturally affecting the flow of sediments. So what do you have to write? We have to say it is affecting, not does not affect, but it is affects the flow of the sediments. And what happens to the sediments? The sediments are settled at the bottom of the dam. And so slowly slowly the sediments level will come up, the depth of the dam will be less and the water will start overflowing. So all those problems will be there. Then the third statement is in Gujarat, the Sapramadi Basin farmers were not agitated when higher priority was given to water supply in urban areas, particularly during droughts. So that also we saw is a false statement. So people were protesting in Gujarat because there is a dam is there, dam is made in Sapramadi River. And this water was mostly carried away to the urban cities in order to supply to the needs of the people who are staying in the urban area. It is a drought season and people who are staying near the dam, they are not getting water. But people who are staying far away in the town, they are getting water. Therefore, the local people agitated. They protested. They said, we have made this sacrifice. We have sacrificed our land, our property. And we have lost our family and everything because of this dam. And afterwards, we are not getting the benefit of the dam. The benefit is going to people who are staying in the in the urban areas. That is injustice. So people began to protest about it. Then the last one, number D. Today in Rajasthan, the practice of rooftop rainwater harvesting has gained popularity despite high water availability due to the Rajasthan Canal and that also is a wrong statement we said in the beginning people of Rajasthan they were very much interested in collecting the roof water rain roof water and storing it in the tank sometimes the tank is inside the house or sometimes it is built in the courtyard underground tanks or sometimes it is water is sent to the well, maybe two well, bore well and so on. So that the underground water level will remain the same, it will not go down. So because Rajasthan is a very dry region and they require a lot of water and every family had no other choice other than collecting this roof water. And otherwise they have to go far away in order to carry water and it was causing them a lot of trouble, a lot of difficulties. And so they did that. But afterwards, government built a dam there and began to supply water to every family, every village in Rajasthan. So they say, perennial canal is there called Rajasthan Canal. And always water is there from the dam. So people can use it for irrigation. People can, people can use it for drinking purpose or their house purpose, cooking, washing, all that. And therefore what happens? The people stop that practice of collecting roof water. They say freely water is coming. Why to struggle? Why to go for collecting this roof water? Actually roof water is the best water, more pure water. The purest form of water is the rain water. So they are abandoning that. They are becoming lazy slowly slowly. And they are going for depending on this 
water that is coming through this canal. So the statement here to correct that people have uh, declined. The practice of collecting roof water has declined because of the availability of water in the Rajasthan canal. That is the answer. And the rest of the answers we have to answer in short questions, essay types, and so that one I will help you towards I will send it to you, send you in the group. Then we come to the end of this lesson. And let us just begin lesson number four, agriculture. Agriculture is a term we are all familiar with, is it not? Because agriculture is the one that provides food for us. If there is no agriculture practice, then we all will have to eat some synthetic food. So at present we are able to eat rice or wheat or fruits, everything it is because of this agriculture. People are there to do the agriculture. And nowadays everyone and he is trying to get away from the agricultural path. They are trying to look for office job. They don't want dirty their hands. Always want to do only clean, clean jobs. So then how are we going to make us available the food grains if there is no agriculture? So people in India we can say more than half of the people are still cultivating the cultivating the field that is their job that's why we are still surviving so let us see uh, what are the cultivations that people not only, not only in india but in the world what type of cultivation are they involved engaged let us see you can follow in your textbook page number 34 that's the number four agriculture page number 34 so we know India is an agriculturally important country. India is an agriculturally important country. Two thirds of its population is engaged in agricultural activities. So only almost sixty percent of the people of India were involved in agricultural activities. Now it has come down. More and more people are going for other activities working in the factories, working in the offices or doing other uh, services and so on. So still around 48 to 50 percentage of people are still working in the farm. So agriculture is a primary activity which produces most of the food that we consume. So there are three types of activities are there, we will come to know it. One is primary. Another one is secondary. Another one is tertiary. So these are the three types of activities that people get involved or people are engaged in. So first one is primary and agriculture is a primary activity and all the food that we eat is produced from the primary type of work people who are working in the field they are responsible for the food that we eat and besides food grains it also produces raw materials for various industries so don't think that all the agricultural products are meant for eating. Of course, we eat a lot of things, all the food grains, fruits, everything we eat. But this agriculture also is producing a lot of raw materials. Raw material is used for producing something else. For example, let us say the cotton is produced. Cotton is cultivated in the field. And that cotton is not for eating. Is it not? Anyone of you is interested in eating cotton? No. 
Cotton is not good for eating. It is meant for uh, making dress. So they have to do the processing of the cotton. They have to weave it. They have to spin it and weave it and finally to make it cloth. So that is also a primary activity. Cotton is cultivated in the field. Then growing of animals. That is also part of primary activities. You know there are sheep are there. The uh, hair of the sheep is used for making dress, woolen dress. So the wool that is coming from the animals. Or we know there are silk worms are there. Some farmers are uh, involved in growing silk worms. And from that silk, silk worms we get the cocoon of the silk worms and from there we make silk dress. So these are primary activities where all these things are produced. So not only food drinks are produced in the primary activity but also some of the raw materials are produced like cotton, silk, wool and so on which are used for producing something else. Then can you name some of the industries based on agricultural raw material? So we can certainly say the textile industry. The textile industry is based on agricultural products. Then moreover some agricultural products like tea, coffee, spices etc are also exported. So when we produce something more than what we require, more than what we need, we can also use it for exporting it. We don't have to uh, keep it in our place and finish up somehow eating or drinking. We can sell it to the other foreign countries who do not have it and get money from them. So that becomes a source of income for us. So, so we can produce a lot of coffee, tea, then other spices, all this can be produced more and can be exported to other countries. So, we shall wind up for today and that is just introduction for this chapter and in the next lesson or in the next class we will study in detail about different types of farming that are taking place in India as well as in other parts of India. So, we shall stop for today.